Hi, my name is Mark and I'm going to walk you through the process of contributing to the Science Scribbler Placenta Profiles project. Before we start, thank you very much for looking at this and uh, I really hope it helps you with getting involved in this very exciting project. So to begin with, this is the, the web page that you'll be looking at hopefully and essentially it's very similar to all the existing Zooniverse web pages. So if you're experienced with them then you should be fine. What we'll do though is we'll have a look at a few of the, the easier things to look at to begin with. The first one is the About page. And this is really useful and I thoroughly recommend having a quick look at this. It tells you all about the research we're doing, why we're doing it and who's doing it. So you can see the team that we're working with and all the different people who are involved in the project. But as I say, the research is the key thing here. And what we're actually really interested in in this project is looking at placentas. Now, the placenta is the organ that sits between the mother and the baby and it basically is a life support unit for the baby. It transfers nutrients from the mother to the baby to allow them to survive. And unfortunately the placenta doesn't always work as well as we would hope and so we're interested in investigating placenta which don't work as well as they could with the ones that do work well and trying to understand the differences so that we can further investigate this and maybe look at medicines in the future. So how do we do this? Well the bit we're really interested in is the, the individual cells inside the placenta. And specifically, we're looking at the internal cell components, and these are really small. Um, for the first case, we're looking at mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. Um, but once again, they're, they're super tiny, so how do we look at this? And the way we do, if you follow down here, is we use a lovely technique which creates beautiful images like this, which is an electron microscopy technique called SBF-SEM, which is serial block phase scanning electron microscopy. And what that does is we take a block of our of our tissue and we use a very very detailed scanning electron microscope to image the surface and give us a beautiful high resolution picture. And then what we do is we tear off or we slice off the very top and then we do the same imaging again. And we just keep on going all the way through our stack, a bit like a flip book, and Eventually, we then have a full 3D block of data that describes everything about our sample. And this is great because it tells us all of the internal components of the cell. We can understand how different cells interact and we can understand how different internal components of the cell interact. The downside, of course, is that we collect a very large amount of data. And that's where we need your help because it's not trivial to analyse this. So let's have, take a look at that before we go any further. If you go back to the main page and you scroll down a little bit. Here's where you can get started. And as I said, we're interested in mitochondria at the moment, but there may well be other elements in the cell that we're also interested in. We'll investigate at a later date. But to begin with, mitochondria, and I'd start with mitomapper, the top view, because that's a little bit easier. That corresponds to these top images, which are the ones that we collect out of the instrument. So they're a bit easier to look at. So just click on that to get going. And the first thing that will happen is you'll get a tutorial page come up. Uh, Definitely go through this because it tells you all of the things you need to know. For example, what mitochondria look like, what the images you're going to look like look like are, where you would then put the marks to show where the mitochondria are. It also tells you a little bit about how many you'd expect. There's a lot of detail in there and it basically gives you a really good primer for what you're trying to do. Once you've completed that, I then take a look at some of the examples. So the example data here um, shows you a really clear set of, of mitochondria so that you can kind of work out what they look like over here. And this area on the screen is the area that you're actually looking at and you need to mark up. One of the things that we can do is on this image, you can do a lot of different things. So you can zoom in and you can zoom out. Now, that can be useful occasionally, but we've generally tried to pick the size of the images so you don't need to. You should be able to see everything you need to at this resolution, at this sort of level. The other thing is, instead of just showing you a single image, we're showing you three consecutive slices from this data set. Somewhere in the data set, we're showing you three slices. And you can move between them by clicking on these buttons down here, and you can see the three different slices. And that helps you to identify um, different objects because sometimes it's not maybe clear in one of the slices but if you go one above or below then it's a lot clearer. You can also see all three of the slices at the same time by clicking on that little icon at the bottom and that can be useful as well just allowing you to sort of compare between different things. 
So once you've worked out how to use this and you've taken a look at all of these examples, it's a good time to start looking at using the marker tool. If you can see things straight up, that's great. If there's something a bit funny going on, you've always got the option of looking on the field guide to the right here, which shows you examples or more examples of mitochondria. It also shows you things that aren't mitochondria, so you know not to click on them. And it gives you some artifacts that are just strange things you might see in the image, which we don't, we're not interested in. So let's start. We identify the marker tool and we click on the things that we think are mitochondria and we just put a click in the middle of them and we choose all the ones that we think. Now you've got a good idea now of what are mitochondria but there's still some ones where it's a bit tricky to work out exactly whether it is or not and I would say that the important thing here is that we do tidy up the data afterwards so if you think it's a mitochondria click on it. If it's obviously not, so for example if it's this blob here, we've seen in the field guide that things like this aren't mitochondria, so we shouldn't click on this, but anything that looks remotely similar we should click on. Now if we have clicked on something that's incorrect you can just use the little X to get rid of it. If we've maybe, tag that one, if we've clicked on something else and it's left here, if you just click back on it with the hand then you get the X and you can delete the point. Also, if you realise you've not done a particularly good job, so say I wanted to um, say this one was out of place, if I click on it, I get the hand and I can drag it around and get it into a better place until I'm happy with where I've dropped it. Um, once I've dropped these on um, and I'm happy with the results, I can then go to done. And done will basically just complete this and move on to the next image. So let's do that. And at which point you get another image and you can carry on going. Now this one's quite useful because it's got one of the final things I need to mention. Just at the bottom you can see there's a chunk of red. These data sets are incredibly complicated and not all of them are what we want to, you to analyse. So we've blocked out regions with red that aren't for you to look at. So if you see a block of red, don't worry about it. Just segment or just um, annotate the rest of the data set. And that's what we really need. If you see something particularly funky, like this thing in the middle here is quite cool, and you want to talk about it, or you want to ask someone what it is, or what's going on, or if you've got any questions about the data, when you've finished, you can click on Done and Talk. And that enables you to then have a uh, open on the talk boards a conversation about this, um, this data set. The other thing that's useful is if there are no mitochondria here, rather than just leaving it blank, if you could also click the No Mitochondria Here checkbox, then that allows us to identify blank images a little bit quicker and so we can try and get rid of them from the stack. So let's go with here, let's go done and talk and this basically takes a picture of the subject, gives the subject name and if you're signed in you can comment on that and you can make comments and you can ask us the research team about what you're seeing here if there's something funky, um, if there's anything particularly interesting. A lot of the time with these data sets you can see funky shapes in them so uh, we've had plenty of people who've hashtagged um, like random cell fish and things like this, which are just images that are shapes that look um, funny. This does however bring me to the talk board. Um, you can get to the talk board through the main menu up here and there are a few different sections on the talk board. Now the talk board is really the social element of this. So you've got, you can ask us questions, um, if there's any problems you can ask for technical support and we'll try and answer them. Um, questions of course we'll try and answer as well. Um, any announcements or anything that we want to tell you about, like if we're putting on new workflows or new data is coming up, we'll post it in the announcements. So if you see anything in there, it's always worth a quick look. And notes are where the thing we were just doing goes into. So any um, particular uh, images that people are interested in go in there. So I think that's the main things. The final thing that I'm going to quickly do, though, after we've done the talk, is just cover the side map, uh, the side view for MitoMapper. Now this is slightly different and the reason it's slightly different is because instead of taking the the front images that we see like this which is what we collect with the microscope what we're doing is we're using a computer to infer what images would look like on this edge and this edge and, and all the way through the stack as well and so that means they look a little bit different uh, but they've still got a lot of similar features so let's have a look. 
once again, I would definitely go through the tutorial for this because it shows you all the differences between the data. So just a couple of the things that you can see reasonably easily. One, the mitochondria are a little bit smaller and that's just because of the way we've had to deal with the data. Um, the other thing is you also get some of this sort of wibbling occasionally and that's just a, a feature of how the data has been collected and sometimes you get these lines through where maybe individual data collections haven't worked quite as well. So there's some funny artifacts that you see and this is uh, yeah this details a few of those things however you know once again it tells you all about that I definitely go through that process. Uh, just to highlight, if you need to go back to the tutorial at any point, you can just click on the tutorial tab and it restarts it if you want to do. And again, the field guide is very, very important for this. There's a specific one for side view of what mitochondria look like in the side view so that you can see. But ultimately, once you're happy with how all of that looks, it's the same process again. So you select the marker tool and you go through it. I normally go for the middle one and you start identifying what you think are mitochondria. So I think that is, and these ones are a little bit more tricky. That's why I suggested starting on the other ones. Um, but these ones are pretty good too. I find zooming in a little bit is sometimes helpful with this one, um, just to help you spot them. But essentially you work through exactly the same process. You identify as many of the mitochondria as you oops, move that into a better position as you can and then you simply say done to complete and that's pretty much it you keep on going for as many times as you can and that's important because we're actually showing each of you a little tiny region on these big images that we've collected and only a couple of slices uh, and we've got loads and loads of slices and a much bigger region but as each of you slowly but surely sort of tiles up this area all of a sudden we'll get an understanding of the entire data set which is super useful gives us so much information about this this very tricky problem so hopefully this has been useful thank you again for your time and looking into this and um, good luck with uh, MitoMapper.